Hi, this is Marty, and welcome back for another video. Okay, so uh, this came up uh, the other day, and it was kind of funny. Um, actually, uh, it was off of a comment, and it was uh, regarding um, INFJ and, uh, and injustice. Okay, so I'd like to say this. Um, I don't necessarily know that injustice pertains, in fact, I'm gonna say it. Injustice does not pertain to the INFJ. Uh, it, injustice is basically when you have a do unto others as you would, now wait for it, do unto others as you would like to be told how to do toward them. Uh, do unto others as you would like to have, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know how the old joke goes, what if I want to be like, I don't know, what <laughs> you make it up. Okay, so um, injustice, I think, is pertains to all people who have a conscience between what is right and wrong. But I think what happens is, as it relates to, um, the, the injustice part of the INFJ comes to um, honor and maybe morality. Is that morali morality? And maybe, um, let's say, honesty. Is that right? And then let's just do the being open, being clear. Um, how about this? Being, being caring. Um, how about... How about um, well, let's just end it there. That's good. Okay. So basically what I wanted to address is I want to address a non-dramatized situation that happened to me that touches on this injustice. And this has to do with me and, and my past. And it has to do with a relationship. It has to do with the mother of my children. And that's why I want to talk about this as it relates to an injustice, because it had um, very severe consequences for my life and, and my two boys, and so. INFJ in injustice. Okay, so uh, the back the backstory, I'm gonna get right into it. Okay, so. As you watch and listen to me in this video, you will hear me talk about specifics and then you will read an explanation from me. The purpose for this type of detail is so that you can clearly understand a very difficult period in my life and also understand the fairness I'm trying to give the situation. As you know, there are not two sides to every story. There is her side, my side, and the truth. This is a learning video and not a blame or accusation pointing video. I want to be fair to the mother of my children and not embarrass or create blame or hate. My children might see this video and I want the best memory and emotions to be heard and felt. In closing, there are also three important things to remember. Who I was at that time, who I have become, and the INFJ that was all, always hiding in the shadows. So I was married uh, to Stacy uh, for 13 years, married for 13 and together for 18. I met Stacy when I was 23 years old and uh, we have two children. Uh, they are now 20 and 21. And uh, this is about the destruction of my marriage. Okay, so uh, how many times did Stacy leave the home? She left the home three times. The first time she left, uh, I came home and she was packing her stuff uh, in her car. Uh, and it was after um, my, okay. Okay, so we were having a lot of problems. We were in and out of therapy. And and I first, what I, what I wanna say is, is that if someone asked me, Marty, were you to blame for the destruction of your marriage? The answer to that question is yes. I do not understand or know what it meant to be a husband or father, especially within a Jewish family. I am not Jewish, nor was I raised within a Jewish home. Also, I would like to add that because of my trauma and abuse as a child, I was not a good person, borderline and malignant narcissism, reason, broken family, and abusive childhood. Yes. Uh, the next question would be, do you think you handled things as a husband should? Uh, the direct answer is, no, I did not. Did you? I should have put my wife and her needs and that of the home and family above my own needs. What was my priority at that time was my self-esteem and the control of a malignant narcissist. Reason, broken family, and abusive childhood. Did you handle things and care for your wife and your children in a manner uh, that you wish you would have or that you should have and blah, blah, blah. Um, no, I failed. Even to this day at 49, I am still not equipped to be a husband or provider as it relates to the creation of a marriage and a family with children. The abuse and trauma that I suffered was too much 
and the ability to recover in time would have been, with my understanding today, an impossible event. With what I know now, there would have been zero hope for me. I should not have gotten married and I should not have had children until I healed my inner self and my relationship with myself and my mother. Reason, broken family, and abusive childhood. I, I did. Um, I was responsible for the destruction of my marriage from a surface view. Who I failed in the area of finances to bring the standard of living that my wife was accustomed to and raised within. Reason, entrepreneurship, and broken family, and abusive childhood. Who was the destruction of my marriage and my family, the Glenn family, from an internal, absolutely without a shadow of a doubt, 100%, uh, the mother of my children was, and I'm gonna prove it in this video, okay? My wife was 100% not capable of expressing her feelings. As an INFJ, I lived with her pain from her childhood for the entire marriage. And as I have said in other videos, it destroyed me and my marriage from the inside out. In fact, I believe that if you were to ask her current husband, if he truly knows who she is, he would not be able to answer yes. I was with her for 18 years and I could not do it. And the last time I asked my children, they could not either. Is that the environment ever okay for an INFJ? Okay, all right. So, and, and, and you know what, and, 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 and if you're looking at this and you're reading this, you say, well, Marty, that's, a, that, that's a, a little bit of a dramatization because in, in a marriage that lasts that long, you have to be open, you have to know who you are, you have to have true empathy and blah, blah, blah. So take that statement with a lot of understanding, love, and care, and I'm not blaming or shaming the mother of my children. I'm just trying to lay the foundation so that you can understand where this video is going as it relates to injustice in the INFJ and a, a real life story. Okay, so on the first one, um, I came home and uh, basically uh, at 11 o'clock at night from work and my, uh, my ex-wife Stacy's car was in the driveway. I knew it was when I came home at 11 o'clock at night, it wasn't there because it got repossessed. Now, I'll go into some financial things that I did to help the INFJ and the younger INFJs with regards to work and finances and the mistakes that I made in later videos. And, and I will data dump stuff on you that you will not believe. It, they were failures. It, it was my fault. And I will never be able to apologize enough. It's never. Gonna... If you add up all the messages that I have written within this video, they are the reason for this statement. My fault. Is that environment ever okay for an INFJ? It's never going to happen. Okay, so I sincerely hope I can help anybody with that information, INFJ or not. Just young individuals who are planning on getting married. Okay, all right. So um, she, I came, okay. So what happened was I came home and her car was repossessed. I walked in, she was in bed. I said, where's your car? She said, it's in the driveway. I said, no, it's not. And I knew. So the very next week we went and got it, blah, blah, blah. I will never forget this. When Stacy and I were discussing the repossession of her car, that was the first door or crack of the financial destruction of the family, of the finances that I did. It was the reason Stacy left the first time was because she realized that the marriage was not worth it if the money was not there. You can look at it as security or way of life. That is your choice. But as you will see, there was more going on. I do understand security and what is required, but within her family, love is measured in the number of digits in the bank account and the number of square feet of your home. That is a fact, and that is the foundation of the family. How well does that sit with the INFJ? It was kind of like the hockey stick, you know, you know, you know it goes up like this, and then it's gonna fall. It was at that moment right there. The repossession of Stacy's car was the breaking point, and I believe it was a very embarrassing moment for Stacy, and it was that embarrassment that caused her to act the way that she did with regards to me, our family, and her parents. Early on in our marriage, Stacy's older sister's husband called a family meeting to discuss his wife's unhappiness 
with the money and financial status of her life. He thought that if he called a family meeting, it would help. It did not, and through received money from his father and grandfather, who are extremely wealthy, he was able to save his marriage. I would also like to add that his father, very tragic, and I am sorry for his loss, committed suicide. Within 12 to 24 months, I believe it was, it was within 12 months, of collecting $10 million in inheritance, he moved into a massive house, 8,000 square feet or more, and began renovating it, making his wife very happy in the process. It was not his own success that saved his marriage, but the wealth of his father and a terrible tragedy. How well does that sit with the INFJ? How well would an INFJ handle being involved with individuals who act like this? Within 30 days, she left the family. And uh, 30 days later, after that point, I came home and she was packing her stuff up in her car. Stacy will say that it was because of the abuse I put upon her, but the reality is that it was the money. I would like to say that my abuse on Stacy and the money are tied for first place, but as you can see, maybe the money was just a little bit ahead of my abuse. I am sorry for the abuse. I really am. I was wrong and I pay for it every day. What was so devastating about that time period or that day and, and the six months that led after it was there was absolutely no communication. There was none. And I mean zero. When I say communication, Stacy is not capable of sharing her inner feelings. To this day, I do not know who she is or what she stands for. In fact, I can say the same about every member of her family. There is zero depth. How well does this sit with the INFJ? Now, I know that I was difficult to talk to, but there was none. I cannot remember how long Stacy lived with her parents, but it was not six months. It has been too long and I cannot remember, but this I do remember. For the entire time, Stacy never told me when she was coming home or what was happening, nor did any member of her family. Silence is the highest form of abuse and her family takes it to a level that to this day, as I have experienced, is unprecedented. How well does the INFJ handle this type of environment? Okay. So then what happened was um, she came back, okay, and she moved back in the house and we tried to make it work and blah, blah, blah. And in throughout this period of time, there are two children being born. And um, so, uh, so keep that in mind. Okay, so the injustice of not communicating and leaving the home. But what happened next is number two, uh, she left the house again when the house got basically not foreclosed on but it was we were selling the home I mean it was we had to get out okay um, so uh, during that time period I was trying to save the marriage and Stacy and I were going and looking at apartments but here's the deal while Stacy and I were looking at apartments with our children I mean literally going out leaving the house going together looking at apartments actually talking to management actually I'm thinking we're all four are moving that's not what was happening what was really happening is Stacy was going to her parents and instead of moving in with her parents, Stacy was secretly talking to her parents and her parents basically rented her a condo across town. That event to this day was and is one of the most hurtful things Stacy and her family did to me and I do not think I ever got over it. You have to also remember that I was going through a tremendous amount within myself and my past. This is all very complicated, but again, we are talking about visible injustice. And I had no idea. And the same communication pattern happened here and here. So there is no doubt in my mind that the first event and the second are identical inside of Stacy's mind. She will say and her family will agree that there is and was no injustice committed and that I deserved this treatment. What do you think?
The mother of my children, communication with the in-laws, it was, I mean, it was nothing. It was non-existent. I had no idea. What happened was I came home from work about six or seven o'clock at night. She was sitting on the couch. She was crying and I looked at her and she said, I'm not going. During this time, Stacy and I were also discussing about, you know, the marriage and trying to save it. I wanted to save it. And, and I, I would ask her, what do you want to do? And just, there was no communication. There was no concrete. She will say that, yes, there was, but as an INFJ, do you listen to words, especially when you're trying to save something, especially when you're in a relationship, do you ever listen to the words or is it the actions that you listen to? And what I asked for and begged for was for action to back up the words and for Stacy to follow through and not go back and forth. I asked for honesty and truth. I did not get that. How well does the INFJ handle this? Listen to. And as an INFJ, do you tell the person, if you don't want me, I need you to do this. Do that and it will succeed. So one of the things that I did for, for Stacy, if you watch other videos, was I, more than a hundred times I said, do you want to live in this area with a new husband and have the life that I don't want to provide and I don't want it and I don't want the materialism, I don't want all this fucking shit, I don't. And so if that's what you want, I'll hand you a divorce on a silver platter. And I, and I swear to God, I would more than a hundred times. I never got an answer, I never. And I never got, you know, if you watch my video on apologizing, what I was asking from her was sit me down on the couch, look me in the eyes and tell me the truth. Hurt me. Tell me the truth, no matter what it is. Bear your soul. Never got it. Never got it. And how do I know I never got it? Because after that relationship, I've had other relationships and I've asked for it and I've gotten it and I've walked. The door slam, the discard. Easy, one and done. Okay, so on this area here, um, I came home. She said, "We're not. I, I'm not going with you." And she was crying. And I said, "Well, where are you going?" And I was then uh, let. I, I was then told that we were leaving in 30 days. And basically, that what it was. I had sold the house, and within 30 days, um, uh, well, basically, she said. That's it. It's over. And during this time period, she also filed. Okay. So that was the, um, uh, that was the first time that she filed for divorce. And basically what happened was during the time when she told me she wasn't leaving and the time we had to vacate the house, I opened my front door. She was standing right next to me and I got served divorce papers. Stacy filed because I dared her and because of an argument we had over the phone, it was an, I dare you. She did. And when I was served, she was standing right next to me. And after being served and shutting the door to our home, she sat down and said she was sorry. It was a very crazy time. And to this day, I do not understand why it had to happen the way that it did. The confusion because of the lack of communication and honesty and truth is beyond my comprehension. How well does the INFJ handle this? So we went the same route as we did here, but there were no divorce papers served here. So we were in the same situation. The only difference between this situation and this situation was that this one was her parents basically renting her an apartment and basically dividing the house when we left and the furniture going with her and then me going to an apartment and that's how it was. All right. The injustice is, why did her parents never tell her to, to you got to talk to Marty. He's your husband. He's your family. We don't matter. We can't get involved in this. They didn't. That's an injustice. As an INFJ, honor, morality, honesty, open, clear, caring, and whatever other words you want to add to it, does it add to the injustice to the INFJ? And does it elevate it to an incredible level of personal attack? Yeah. As I have always said, filing for divorce is a choice. And anything I did to cause such an action is my fault, but everything else that I endured is not deserving. The divorce is the statement saying you failed and I am moving away from you and going to start a new life alone or with another person. I do not want to spend the rest of my life with you.
Yes. But is it strictly in an INFJ thing or is the INFJ with these things here and the perfectionism, the honor, the morality and the higher standards and the IQ of right and wrong and how we work and how we operate and how we view those people that we attach to and we give and we would die for? Does it make that injustice an incredible thing in which it makes it feel like we have a higher sense of the effect of injustice on us as INFJs? And the answer to that question is yes. Without a doubt. But is it strictly an INFJ thing? No, it's not. So that's important for somebody who is dating a non-INFJ or if you're in a relationship with an INFJ for you to know. And I, I truly believe that. So going on to number three. Uh, okay, so all right. Um, basically, um, after this, um, this was my surgery time. So we were here for two years, and during that two years, it was really hard, and, and it, it wasn't good. And, 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 and I truly believe that Stacy stayed with me through the surgery, and you know, you ha the hat's got to go off. you got to say thank you because she, she dug deep, and, and it, she really cared, and blah, blah, blah. You know? So uh, there's a big thank you to that because, uh, yeah, it, it, it was... Yeah, it was, it was hard, really, really hard. So, okay, so on the third one, basically what happened is when we got over my surgery, you know, I, a few things happened. If you watch my other videos, um, I, I've talked about my disgust with my mother, my children, you know, Stacy's family, and that's all true. I mean, the foundation of, of where they stand, it, it's absolute, ab, it is absolute dog shit. It's dog shit. Okay. So with regards to new home and, and, and what happened next? Okay. So Stacy left here. I got back from my surgery and some things happened. And basically what happened is, uh, Stacy filed for divorce again. And here's the second time. And basically what happened is without me knowing it again for the third time, Stacy left the home, filed for divorce and talked to her parents and her parents this time bought and furnished this home. So, so when Stacy left, it was basically just, I don't know, she was just leaving a stranger. And that's really what it felt like. So as you use these words on an 18 year relationship with 13 year marriage and two children, you think me as an INFJ and holding this pretty high, you're, well, you get it, right? Okay. So you're looking inward and you're like, who are you? I mean, like, my God, like the injustice, like, how could you do all this to me and not communicate? And there was no communication. And then how come, you know, in-laws, mother-in-law, father-in-law, or any member of the family, the other two sisters, the other two, nobody, not a single person, family or friend said, this is wrong. Your first priority is to your husband and your family. What you are doing is absolutely shit wrong. This actually happened. The divorce went through. I have been divorced for 15 years. And if you watch some of my other videos, this is the absolute injustice. How long has it been since you've heard Stacy's voice on a text, email, phone, anything? Stacy and I raised our children living 90 seconds away from each other without talking. Both our boys were given brand new cars at 16, and I was not consulted one single time. I was removed from the lives of our children as the father and replaced by Stacy's parents and other family members. I was also replaced by Stacy's current husband. In family law court, there was a day when I screamed in a standing room only courtroom, I am not dead. Stacy's then boyfriend and now husband was there that day in court. He has witnessed all of this. He has been married twice with children from each marriage. I wrote him and Stacy a four page letter expressing all of these feelings. I received zero response. In fact, over the 15 years, I have tried so much more. Nothing has worked. All efforts have failed. How well does the INFJ handle this? It's been 15 years. The last time I heard her voice was her screaming at me from 30 or 40 feet away and or in court. My children are 20 and 21 and we've been divorced for 15 years. Been over that with other videos. Now here it comes to the most important part. Is this an INFJ thing? 
Or is it because of this that adds insult to injury where most people would be like, forget it, F it, you're divorced, she's married, she's happy, just move on, go with your life. As an INFJ, I try, but I can't. And why can't I? There's a mother of my children. We have two boys. We're parents for life. And how does this manifest itself in a family environment? And here's the tragedy of this. My two boys are okay with this, like everyone else. Dad, you're divorced. We're on our own. Family, it's disintegrated. It doesn't matter. It does matter. So what did the INFJ what did the INFJ do? I basically said, Tyler and Preston, as long as you agree with this and think this is okay, you cannot have my friendship or anything else. All you may have is all of my money, all of my inheritance, all of my life, and it is unconditional with my absolute love and devotion for you. But my friendship? You may not ever have it, and you may not have it in this lifetime, as long as you think this is all okay. I'm done. My love, money, future, everything as it relates to the value and health of your life is my unconditional devotion to you as my children. My friendship? No. Fuck that. You may not have that. This is an absolute tragedy, and this is abuse of an imaginable kind. Is it an injustice to any human being? Yes, it is. It's an absolute injustice. What makes it harder, makes it worse for the INFJ is this. So, this is a, this is, and this is, it, it, this is no drama. This is exactly, this is the God's honest truth. And, 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 and there is no member of my divorced family, even my, no one could say that this is, I'm being dramatic or nothing. This is the God's honest truth. And it is not being dramatic or anything. So this is Marty and we'll see you in the next video. Now, as you can tell that, that, you know, this is a really hard video to do. Uh, it's very emotional for me, extremely. Um, so uh, basically, as in a nutshell, what I'd like to say is think hard when, before you get married. Um, really, really dig deep and really ask the hard questions about how someone feels and do it within the first six months or year of your relationship. And don't be afraid to be alone um, because if you get it wrong, I mean, you're dealing with so much when it comes to marriage. And I agree with the institution of marriage and I agree with having children and, and I agree with family. I agree with all of it. But my God, why did this need to happen? Stacy and I were intimate four to six times a week from the day we met till the day we divorced. Through everything you have heard and read in this video, our sexual relationship never stopped. It never slowed or changed, ever. In fact, the very night before the day that Stacy left to move into her new home that Stacy's parents bought for her, we were intimate. I asked Stacy more than 100 times, directly looking into her eyes, that if she wanted a different life with another man, please tell me and I will give you a divorce on a silver platter. I did not and could not ever get an answer. The only time she ever answered was after a fight or when I lost control because of the lack of communication and backed her into a corner and forced a yes from her. In fact, I was blamed and shamed for keeping her up at night and bullying her for communication. The silence that I endured is something I cannot explain. I would also like to add that I gave Stacy 100% custody of our children. She is a good mother and told the court that. And I paid 100% of all community debt. Stacy went through four attorneys. I had one, and he was a mutual friend of ours. 
I never served a single document on Stacy through the court system. I never acted as petitioner. She is the mother of my children. I do not blame Stacy for leaving. I was destroyed by what happened after she left. Our divorce took five years. How well does the INFJ handle deafening silence with absolutely zero depth or emotion? Was it my malignant narcissism that destroyed my family? Was it INF rage or was it a combination of everything? Is the INFJ MBTI personality type, as I have mentioned in many of my videos, at the foundation of who I am, who we are, sitting deep beneath childhood trauma and abuse? For 18 years, my life was Stacy. Did I not know who I was? Was I subjected to injustice the entire life with Stacy? And as a result, was it the INFJ rage that destroyed my family? Was it choosing the wrong partner and not taking the time to think seriously about the future of my life? See you in the next video.